share that. But Veronica is a DePaul University student and uh, also a dreamer, and she's going to talk a little bit about um, that experience. And if you can tell us any I other, actually, I have excellent. Actually. All right, welcome. <laughs> One Barbara. step ahead of you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You all look beautiful. <laughs> really. <laughs> um, so let's start with an introduction. Uh, my name is Veronica Soto, um, and I am a sophomore at DePaul University. Um, I am a dreamer, and I am studying community and public health with minors in communications and community service. Like many of you, um, like me, I mean, many of you are thinking about food at this moment. Um, but many, maybe some of you might think, what does the word dreamer mean? Dreamer um, comes from the DREAM Act. So it's a dream, being a dreamer means that you would benefit from the DREAM Act. Uh, and DREAM is an acronym for Development Relief and Education for Alien Minorities. I am an alien because I was brought here by my parents at the age of four, but I prefer to use the term undocumented student because aliens remind me of alien versus predator and aliens are ugly, so <laughs> I'd rather not use that one. <laughs> um, I've grown up in the U.S. I have been here for 15 years, and I have gone through the public school, public school system from K through 12th grade. And up until 2012, I had no protection from deportation, nor was I able to work, leave the country, or the worst one of all, drive. Um, I say it's the worst because it's driving. <laughs> Cars, you know. And I say 2012 because that year, President Obama passed DACA, Deferred Action for Early Childhood Arrivals. Deferred Action is beneficial to me because it gives me protection from deportation for two years, and I'm able to work and drive, yay. Um, as many of you know, since many of you are students, the cost of college is crazy expensive and is a privilege many take for granted. In my opinion, in order for a person to succeed in college, someone has to want it, whether it be the individual or a third party that cares a lot about the individual. For me, it's my parents and Miss Leah Pasquazi, who is my posse. Um, <laughs> I love you. Um, and so, in writing the speech, I had to think of moments to share where my race and status were salient to me. <clears throat> the first time, I recall, was the day I was called stupid for not knowing how to speak English. I was in kindergarten when this happened, and it astonishes me that this moment happened so early in my life. Um, the teacher asked me a question, and I tried to respond in broken English, and then a classmate turned around and was like, you're stupid. <laughs> Kids can be mean. Um, <laughs> and at this stage, I didn't know what stupid meant because of the language barrier. But when I figured out what it meant, it made me really sad. And it made me resent my education. Fast forward to my freshman year of high school. <clears throat> I was told I probably couldn't go to college, and let alone a four-year university, because I had a second-class education. This being said, because the school district that I went to wasn't considered the best in the area. This person had a daughter in the same area, better school district, and she was also documented, two things that I didn't have. And according to him, these were necessary ingredients in order to attain a college education. But, you know, here I am. Um, and so it took me back to that moment in kindergarten where instead of, but instead of making me resent my education, it made me resent being undocumented. I felt limited, I felt oppressed and imprisoned because I felt like I could never be successful in this country. 
But then my junior year of high school, I was made aware of a community that supported undocumented students. And I began to look into success stories of other students like me, who despite being told that they couldn't, they did. And I began to surround myself with encouraging people and positivity. And I began listening to my parents when they said, you can do it, mija. You have it in you. And so I actually started to think and to believe that I could go to college. <clears throat> my college application process was very strategic. Um, I had to apply for early admissions because I needed to know ahead of time in order to plan ahead and get resources to pay for the high cost of tuition. By January, I had been accepted to three schools, one of them being DePaul, which I consider my dream school. After deciding to go to an ex such an expensive school with no money, I began to look for financial aid. I actually call this time of the year scholarship season because most deadlines are from January to May. So happy scholarship season, guys. <laughs> and now I love being here and I love being a student because I know that when I receive my degree, it'll mean more than a degree in public health and all-nighters and an unhealthy amount of caffeine. Um, but it'll also symbolize and it'll mean that I overcame adversity. And you're all inspiring. Look at you. Look at each other. And I appreciate you being here on this lovely morning to open your minds and learn more about this issue. I believe we live through each other's, um, I believe we live through each other by listening to one another's stories. So I hope that you will share yours with me like I have done today. People like, it's because of people like you that students like me are able to attain a post-secondary education. And for that, I thank you and enjoy the summer.